Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's program, I'm going to be looking at an angle which most YouTubers and most technical analysts will not really talk about, and that is the P word, and why we really need to talk about this if we really want to be successful. I'll also have a look at the background of what's happening that's affecting the Bitcoin price. We had a look at the wider markets on Monday, so we'll leave that until the next Monday's video. But I really want to spend a little bit more time on the 60-day cycle with Bitcoin to ascertain the direction over the next few weeks and months. So if that sounds interesting, then without further ado, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. So the title of the video is Bitcoin. We really need to talk about this and that is about the P word. Okay, so I'm going to start off with one of the most important aspects of investing and it happens time and time again and it has only been happening, would you believe, for about 250 years. And the background of all that is actually to do with this thing here called attitude. And if you watch my video on Monday, you'll know that I was talking about attitude. And this particular focus that I want to look at now today is all about attitude, about psychology, about the mindset, how we process information. And if you want to be successful in investing, in my experience over the last 30 to 40 years, is that if you don't get this right, nothing else will be right. Because this is what really adds value to people's investing skills. And before I focus on the actual word which I'm talking about, and that is actually patience, as mentioned in the introduction, I want to show you exactly how it manifests itself on the charts. So as we started with Bitcoin back here in 2009, hardly anybody heard about it and hardly anybody invested in it. So some people obviously got in here, but have a guess how many people who got in at this point are still in here at this point. And your guess is as good as mine, and that is probably with a very big emphatic zero. The problem is the market is set up, as you can see, to take out people and shake people out on all these red candles along the way, or even from this point, to even at this point. The majority gets shaken out by the ups and downs of the market. So this is what I'm talking about here. The power of patience. Why time in the market matters more than timing the market. If we can just get out of the mindset of trying to get in at these points and trying to get out at these points, because obviously you would make a lot more money, but the problem is one very simple thing, and that is nobody knows when this is going to happen or this is going to happen. All we know is we know the start of a cycle and probably at the end of a cycle. So whatever happens in between, this timing the market is probably going to end up making you more losses than gains. So just a quick insight into the power of patience, and it's very succinctly put here, that in the world of investing, there is a saying, time in the market matters more than timing the market. This adage emphasizes the importance of patience and long-term commitment to building wealth. And this is the important bit here as well, building the wealth. You can't just build it in one day, one week, one month. You have to spend, whether we like it or not, we have to go on this arduous and very challenging journey. So from the bottom of this market here, this was a very challenging journey here to the top of the market. So these are monthly red candles. So you can see that the market was chopping up and down during that month. Same here, same here. The chances are you will not have survived that because the human mindset finds it very difficult to manage these types of emotions along the way. And the same thing happened the second cycle. You can see how the red candles are dotted all over the place. And this is the market's way to shake the weak hands out of the market and bring the stronger hands into the market. And it's your choice whether you want to be the weak hands or the strong hands. Same here. Look at the number of red candles. One more here, one more here. So on the way to the top of the market, you'll always see these red candles dotted about. These are the opportunities that the market has to shake you out. So when it starts, you'll see that they're always dotted around in between. You never get all green candles and they're always there in every cycle so far. So guess what's going to happen here? We've currently just had one red candle there last month. And between where we are going and where we are now, we're going to get one or two more and that's going to shake a lot of people out and I want my members to realize that that when we get those red candles 
please don't be the ones that get shaken out. Until our indicators, the Bexit indicators, tell us to do otherwise, it's better to hold on and fasten your seatbelts and stay in your seat. If we want to learn from the history, this is telling us, this is one of the reasons why I show you this chart right at the beginning of every video, because I want people to take a long-term view. This is not a space where you wake up in the morning and a Lamborghini is going to be parked outside. That's the kind of thing that you can only dream of, but those dreams are not real. And what I want to do is to just hammer this point by looking at some of the great wisdom of all the great investors. And as this article says, more than 60 years of experience has taught us that successful investing requires patience, discipline, and the ability to control one's emotions. This is what I keep going on about in virtually every single video, because I know that it will help people to iron out the volatility in everybody's emotions that you get. Because once you're sucked into the market's emotions, it will try and shake you out all the time. So we've got to keep a control over our emotions. That's the most important thing. And what this article is showing is the insight in the timeless wealth building principle of these people here, all these great investors of the past of the last 60 years or so. And you'll see the main theme of their success comes from that word patience in the background of each of these quotes. This one is by Shelby Davis and he's saying, be patient and think long term. Invest for the long haul, don't get too greedy and don't get too scared. As we've seen currently, the market's been going down, people are getting scared, they're going out of the market and they're losing the opportunity for the next six to 12 months to make life-changing amounts of money. Secondly, Charlie Munger, waiting. What is waiting? Patience, of course. So waiting helps you as an investor and a lot of people just can't stand to wait. It's difficult, it's not easy. Nobody says that patience is easy, but we have to learn, we have to manage our emotions, manage our patience. If you didn't get the deferred gratification gene, then you've got to work very hard to overcome that. And Warren Buffett, the stock market is a device to transfer money from the impatient to the patient. And I've shown you this quote many, many, many times if you've been watching my videos over the last few years. And if we move down further, it says here quite clearly the thing that everybody does. I'm sure there aren't many people who haven't done it. I've tried to do it in my investment journey many, many years ago, and I still get the urge to do this, and that is to try and time the market. Of course, we have to try and do that at the bottom of a bear market and get out at the top of the bull market, but you can never get the exact bottom and get the exact top. But once you've invested at the bottom of the bear market, you've really got to fasten your seatbelts and hold on tight until the end of the bull market. And as Peter Lynch says quite clearly, far more money has been lost by investors trying to anticipate corrections than lost in the corrections themselves. And finally, Christopher Davis here, though tempting, Trying to time the market is a loser's game. $10,000 continuously invested in the market over the past 20 years grew to $63,636. If you missed just the th best 30 days, your investment was reduced to 11,000. So you can see that any time spent out of the market in anticipation of timing the market, i.e. timing the corrections and timing the tops and timing the bottoms, more times than not, you will lose money. So I hope I've given that message. It's up to you whether you want to take it. It's your money, your decisions, your responsibility. Okay, so let's move on to looking at some of the things that are going on in the background of Bitcoin that will affect the Bitcoin price. And an interesting article came out by some analysts predicting the price of Bitcoin to go up to $265,000. If you want to read the full article, it's on Coin Telegraph here. And if we scroll down what we find here, we find that this is a prediction from the founder and CEO of the on-chain and market analytics firm CryptoQuant. And the analyst here is Ki Young Ju. And it's referring to this chart saying that the Bitcoin's hash rate to the market cap ratio has increased significantly in 2024, suggesting a possible increase in market activity and investor interest. Everybody's got a lot of different predictions out there. And this one is based on the market cap to the hash rate ratio. Okay, we're going to move on to the liquidation heat map. And what we're finding is that there are now zones down here where the price could quite easily come back to. And this zone down here is at around about 60,300. And the price currently as it is is 61,200 as I'm making this video. So let's see if the price comes back down to about 60,300 and takes out all the stops down here for all the longs before we move on to try and take out the shorts here. 
at 63,000. So this looks like a reasonable range that we've been in for a while and it looks like it's going to continue. And if we have a look at the Bitcoin ETF overview in terms of the asset inflows into the ETFs over the last seven days, this explains why the Bitcoin price has been actually quite subdued. We know all about the bleeding from the grayscale exchange here, but the BlackRock iBit ETF was making up for quite a lot of that, but now it too is relinquishing some of its Bitcoins. And you'll see there's quite a few red now down here. So what we're really seeing is a mixed bag. And until we get this into all the greens one more time, we need to see more of the greens here in order to be more confident about the price of Bitcoin going up. This does not give us any clue that the market is going to go up to 67, 69, 70, 73,000 anytime soon. And as I showed you this chart last week, for the first time in three months, we started getting a positive inflow. And you can see the long wicks down here are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So over time, in the next few months, you're going to see more and more of the positive inflows rather than the negative inflows from Grayscale. And it may well be that most of the bleeding may be out of the system, but they still have well over 200,000 Bitcoins and anything can happen with that over the next few months. And finally, on the background stuff, just want to show you the total exchange inflow on all exchanges. And this is from CryptoQuant here. As you can see, when we come to the top of the bull market, you get these spikes of the amount of Bitcoins going onto the exchanges. And same here, you can see the spike. We didn't get too much of a spike at the 69,000, but it still was higher at this point. But you can see quite clearly at the moment it's quite low down here. So that tells us that there's not a lot of people out there wanting to sell their Bitcoins because their intention to sell increases the amount of Bitcoins that go onto the exchanges. So you would expect some sort of a spike here. And at the moment it's quite subdued. So we can elicit the information here that the majority of the people who hold a lot of the Bitcoins, especially the whales, they're not expecting the market to top out yet. Okay, I'm going to move on to the technical analysis for Bitcoin now and looking at also the 60 day cycle. But before I look at the 60 day cycle, just want to show you this particular pattern that's now developing on the Bitcoin price on the daily time frame. Some people would call this a wedge, but when the consolidation has been more than three weeks, which it has been since here, so this is then called a pennant. And if we have a look at the Bulkowski explanation of all this, so this is a falling wedge explanation that once it's been a duration of three weeks, this is the minimum duration for a wedge. Otherwise, if it's more than that, it becomes a pennant. But the most important thing is here, if you can see that this downturn is showing it to break to the upside. And the breakout, as you can see here, can be in any direction, but is upward 68% of the time. So what we've got is a 68% to 32% probability going on here. So with that in mind, it looks like with a higher probability that somewhere down the line here, in this pattern that we've got, We've got a high here, a lower high and a lower high. So you can see the direction of travel is to the downside. And on the other side of the pennant here, we've got lower low, lower low and another lower low. So what we're doing now is we're coming back down further. And I've got this white box here drawn, which is really the 61.8 from this point here to the top that we've just been to and got rejected at around 65,000. So if we do a close up of the Fibonacci retracement from the bottom here to the top, you can see that this white box is a 61.8. And this is the level I would normally expect it to come back down. And that's around the 59 and a half to 59.7. So that liquidation map I showed you earlier on would confirm that this is where it's likely to go in the next 24 to 48 hours. And the question is, are we going to come back down to meet this support line one more time? And that would have to break the 59 and a half box here. So what we may get is coming back down to 61.8, getting a bounce here. And at this point, it has a decision to make. And as Balkowski's probabilities say, 68% of the time, it should break up to the upside. And the next target would then be at this point to get above the 67,000 and come back and retest this level here at around about 71, 72. This looks like the higher probability play if we break up at this point. But as you'll see with the 60 day cycle, we may have a probability of going down to the lower side yet because this still is on the table. And as I mentioned, when the price started to move from here with this green candle, everybody thought we're now going to go to the moon. And as I mentioned in the last Monday's video, we needed to get above this 67,000 to take the 50, 52,000 off the table. And of course, what we did was we made a lower high from that point onwards. So again, it's one of these dead cat bounces that's coming back down lower and lower with a lower high and a lower low. So this is where we're at at the moment. We've got a pennant, we've got a 61.8, 
around 59 and a half. This is where I would think that in the next 24 hours to 48 hours, it's more than likely to come back. And that would take out the liquidation map I've just shown you at 60,300. So all the leverage players at 60.3 thousand as their stops should be taken out at that point. And then we have a decision to make to go back up towards this line here, where it may break to the upside on a 68% probability ratio. But if it doesn't break there, then as I'll show you on the 60 day cycle, then the probability to come back and wick down to this 50, 52,000 becomes a little bit more probable. Okay, let's go straight into the 60 day cycle. We really need to know exactly where this is going. And please remember, there is no hard and fast rule that says it's got to go up or it's got to go down. This game is all about probabilities, possibilities, no guarantees and no certainties. So always keep that in mind. And before I delve into the 60 day cycle, I still get questions about what is this 60 day cycle. And this is a creation of Walter Bressart. And what it does is, as he says quite clearly in here, it's about timing is everything. And I just want to give you the background about the thinking of the creator of this 60 day cycle. And what he's saying here is that there is no magic oscillator or indicator that will bring you success in the markets. A knowledge of trading techniques and tools to improve timing and determine trend is the key to low risk, high probability trades that can bring you success. And the crux of the matter here is that there are many tools to help improve your trading, but only cycles will allow you to add the element of time into your trading. So what we're doing with the 60 day cycles is using a time based framework to make head or tail about the direction of the Bitcoin price. So I hope that's understandable why I use the 60 day cycles. It gives us a framework to work in or in terms of the price action that we're seeing with the Bitcoin price. So here we are, the 60 day cycle started here. The last cycle ended on day 57 from the previous cycle. And currently today on the 9th of May, we are on day 50 as you can see here. So that means that we've still got to the end of the cycle, 60 days from day 57 to this point here, this red line on the 19th of May, this is where we expect the end of the cycle. And obviously we've got that flexibility of around about 10 or 15 days either way. So it could end here into this 60 day cycle. You do get one flush out and we're waiting for that flush out. It could happen here, but let's make head or tail out of this. Firstly, so what we've got here is a field cycle. The, the cycle started here around this point and what we've done is we've closed below that here to give us a failed cycle and also we've got a left translated cycle because the high before the midpoint here we didn't go back and make any other higher high after the midpoint. So what we've got is a left translated failed cycle. We made our lower highs along the way and we made our lower lows along the way. So the trajectory is quite clearly to the downside. This is where it's aiming for towards the end of the cycle. So as far as I can see with that trajectory down, we're not really out of the woods yet. I know that this counter trend rally got everybody excited one more time. But what I see in the charts here is that with this trajectory to the downside, we still have this little matter of this price action down here at 50 to 52,000. And this is firmly on the table. And when we were coming down here with these two candles, it looked like a 60-40 probability play that we're going to come back down and find support at this point. But at this point here, where the expectation was to the low side, it was very impressive the way the Bitcoin went back up again. Because when you look to the left-hand side, there's only three candles, three daily candles, that shot us from the 50-52 all the way up to above the 60,000. So with very little price action here, it seemed very unexpected and odd for it to bounce at this point here but bounce it did and we just have to accept what the market wants to tell us. And if you do a Fibonacci retracement from the bottom to the top there, that if it is going to actually come back down below this point here, this support line at 56,000, we can see that the 1.618 when it breaks a previous low, it has a habit of coming back down to the 1.618. So this is still very much on the table. It doesn't have to happen. However, the saving grace here is that we are coming deeper into the 60 day cycle now. So we moved from this point here where there was a more of a chance of coming down, but now we're deeper into the cycle and we haven't broken this point. So that tells me that instead of a 60, 40 probability at this point here to come down to the 50, 52, because we're deeper into the cycle, that probability has now shifted to a 50-50. And what would be really bullish is if the price actually bounced off this level here, the previous support line that we've seen so far. If it can do that going into the 60 day cycle, that's telling us that this is off the table and this is off the table and the chances are we're going to go back up. Maybe not, 
to break the top half here at the 73, 74. But with everything else going on in the background on a balance of probabilities, what I see in the next cycle is that we're going to be range bound between 60 and 70,000. So we could revisit these levels one more time. And this consolidation would really be quite bullish because it would put down a structure that would be very healthy for a big move to the upside over the coming two or three months. And when we look at the monthly chart, that's what it's really telling us when I look at some of the candlestick patterns developing. So, so far what we've got is that when we topped out here, we made a counter trend rally here, 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 and here. So we've had four counter trend rallies and we may get another one over here before we dump down and maybe find support there or that's the point where we come back down to the 50. So this is where there are two greater probabilities happening if we break this structure down here at about the 60,000 mark. And so what's really happened is that these counter trend rallies are there to trap people, to think that we're now going to go up and, and people get excited here, start buying up at these points, only to be dumped down here. And then they get out at these positions. And this is how the market shakes people out and takes the money off you. Please remember, this is not my prediction of 50, 52,000. What I'm doing is I'm simply respecting the weakness of this trend here and balancing out the probabilities based on a time-based framework like the 60-day cycle. And if we do get to this level here between 50 and 52, I would expect a massive bounce back up here because the institutions will be readily waiting with their cash to buy up in large amounts and the whales will also know that this is a big support line and they'll be buying up here as well. And many of those institutions who fail to get on board, they'll be the ones waiting eagerly for this price to get on board. And they may well see that as their final opportunity to get on board before the big move to the upside for the Bitcoin price. So in conclusion, with this 60 day cycle, what I'm really looking at is that we're deep into the 60 day cycle here. The probability has shifted from 6040 to 5050 here to get down to the 50, 52,000 mark. And if we do get to this range here, then you should expect a big move and bounce to the upside. And the reason why I started this video with the P word, patience, is because sadly, this is where we're going to lose a lot of people, a lot of the retailers, because the fear of it going further down will make them go out of their positions at this point. And then we're back to the psychology and the patience, the attitude, the mindset, and the weak hands being shaken out. And everybody has their own decisions to make here. My job is just to elicit the information and to extrapolate that information and give it some direction in terms of the Bitcoin price. Okay, so I'm going to finish on this final note, which is basically quite a few comments asking me that you keep mentioning the Bitcoin miners in your videos. What is this? And I do explain this many, many times, and I really didn't want to be keeping on repeating it, but it is a great opportunity for those people who can see that the Bitcoin price is only at the beginning of the parabolic phase that we expect over the next six to 12 months. So as I keep showing you this particular chart at the beginning, the whole point of this chart at the beginning is to keep people's focus on the long term, not the daily, weekly or monthly movements here, there and everywhere. These are some of the movements that are going to occur, which are designed to shake you out, as I've said many times. So having got in here at the bottom of the bear market, what we really want to do is we've already captured this amount with the Bitcoin miners. And what we've really got left here and expecting a move above the previous all-time high. As we've seen in the past, whenever we break the previous all-time high, we have a big move to the upside. Same here in this cycle. We had a big move to the upside once we broke that neckline and same here as well. So based on the historical perspective, we can expect once we break the 69,000, we can expect a very big explosive move to the upside. Wherever that's going to be, I don't know. It can be 100,000, 150, 200, 500, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. We will look at our Bexit indicators to tell us when to get off the Bitcoin train. And every week I show you one of the Bexit indicators to tell us exactly where we are. And every week until the end of the bull market, we'll keep on looking at them and updating them so we know exactly where we are in the cycle. And as soon as those Bexit indicators show confluence, then we know that that's the time to get off. So coming back to the question, what are the Bitcoin miners? So if we have a close up view here, I'll show you exactly the measurements of the price action and what to expect with the Bitcoin miners. So taking the measure from the bottom of the bear market at the end of 2022 here at around 15,400, we went all the way up to about just below 74,000. And you can see with Bitcoin here, so far in that big move from the bottom to where we are currently, 
and the high that we made, we've come up to a 379% move. And if we have a look at the Bitcoin miners and how they reflect what's happened with the Bitcoin price, this is the bottom here at the end of 2022 with Marathon Digital Holdings. And this came down to 311 as their bottom price. And this went up as high as as you can see, 988%. So, so far, what this is showing is a 3x leverage, i.e. three times the price of Bitcoin. Because with the Bitcoin miners, they're mining the Bitcoin at a much lower price. And many people like to buy into MicroStrategy because they're holding a lot of Bitcoins. But they're buying their Bitcoins at an average price when they first started in August 2020 at around about the 20 plus thousand. And they've currently been buying it well up into the 60s thousand. So their average is well over the 40, 45 thousand. Whereas the Bitcoin miners back in 2020 were producing the Bitcoins at around about the $5,000, $6,000, $8,000 mark. And currently they're producing that at around about the $30,000. So their average price of the Bitcoins is much less. So as the price of Bitcoin goes up, their Bitcoins that they're holding increases by a multiple of three, five, 10 times more than the Bitcoin price. And that's why, as I've mentioned many times, I don't hold Bitcoins, I hold only the Bitcoin miners. And in the Bitcoin miners private member section that I run here, I mostly focus on the larger companies like Marathon, like CleanSpark, like Riot and Cypher, etc. Because these are the companies that are holding the most amount of Bitcoins. So when the price of Bitcoin goes up, these are going to show quite a large exponential growth in their price. And how that manifests itself in terms of the price action, we can see quite clearly here in the last cycle with the marathon price, just after the halving, if you take the price from there, because this is exactly where we are currently at the halving. So this is a realistic look at what could possibly happen. Of course, there are no guarantees or certainties. We can only go by one data point that we've got. But we've seen with Bitcoin that each cycle repeats itself. So by a process of extrapolation from that information, we can say that more than likely with a higher degree of probability, the Bitcoin miners having some sort of a big parabolic move this side here, because this is what happened at this point from 2020. So if we have a look at from the halving here with Marathon, it's gone from down here at around about the 40 cents level and it topped out exactly at the same time as Bitcoin in November 2021. And that went up by 201x here. So while Bitcoin went up from the halving here, it was around about 8,000 and went up to 69,000. Bitcoin went up by 7x, while Marathon went up by 201x. Obviously, it had a much lower base of 40 cents, so it had a much greater impact. But just based on the tops of these candles here in the previous two cycles, if we extrapolate that line, we can expect some sort of a target price around here for Marathon of around about $150. And at yesterday's close at around about $20. And what we can expect in this bull market, based on a few indicators that are leading to this particular point at about $150, that would be a 6x. And of course, it can go much higher than that. So my expectation in this cycle is for the major miners to do a 5 or even maybe if Bitcoin really goes ballistic towards the 200 plus mark, we could get more than a 10x here. So this is what we do in the Bitcoin private member section. Just like Bitcoin has been a little bit subdued and that's reflected in this price. But as you can see here, we're making higher lows along the way and higher highs. So we do know that the trajectory is to the upside. And this currently, this low point is presenting an incredibly good opportunity. So this is where I'm buying the dips to increase my positions with the Bitcoin miners. So while the Bitcoin miners have gone down by around about 40%, so far from the end of close on the 7th of May, we're 19% down from 434,000, we're down to 352,000. Now you may think this is quite a strange target here at 5 million. But if we expect the Bitcoin miners to go up between 5 or 10 or even 15x, depending on how far Bitcoin goes, then a 10x of this would be 3.5 million, which is not bad, considering 5 million is quite a big target. And if it does go to 15x, then we will obviously smash this target. So this is a passive portfolio that we've got running. And if we compare that with the trading portfolio here, this is actually up 9% compared to the 19% down with the passive one. So as you can see, the power of the trading portfolio is that by using ratio trades, which we've done over the last four months, this portfolio is up 
to 465,000 from 434,000, despite the 40 to 50% correction with the Bitcoin miners. So overall, so far in 2024, we are 9% up. And once again, we have a target of 5 million there. So if this was to 10x, we would get to 4.6 million. But obviously, we're going to be doing more of these ratio trades down here. And the last one that we did was on the 3rd of May last week. And some of these are open. So we're waiting to get back into some of the other miners. Or when we see a better opportunity with a different miner, we'll go into that. So this is a dynamic way of trading and increasing the number of total units instead of the passive portfolio. So this is a good comparison that we're going to make towards the end of the bull market and see where we are. And if you want to join us on this journey, which we're hoping would be somewhere around here, this is what we're trying to capture over the next six to 12 months. We got in here, we've captured this amount, and we are now waiting to capture the last bit over the next six to nine months. If you want to join us, I've increased the number of places available. All you have to do is click the join button below any of my videos or in the description box, or you can join on my channel here. You can click the join button at this point. And for the price of a coffee per week, you'll have access to two videos a week, which we do on Wednesdays and Fridays, where we discuss the ratio trades, we discuss the portfolios, and we discuss the opportunities with the Bitcoin miners as they present themselves. And I also do a daily update. So we're up to date every single day of the week. So we don't miss any opportunities or any information or any articles with the Bitcoin miners. So I hope that explains exactly what we do with the Bitcoin miners. And in the videos that we do on Wednesdays and Fridays, we cover the Bitcoin analysis as well as the 60 day cycles, as well as track the long term portfolios. We do the member requests as well as the opportunities with the ratio trades that we do. OK, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.